guys. Thank you for tuning in. We're with Dave and Justin from Dead Cross. Thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you for having us. How are you guys doing? Decent. Everything Fidgety. Good? Fidgety? <laughs> Fidgety, yeah. Fidgety's good. Yeah. What's new and exciting in uh, the world of Dead Cross? Absolutely fucking nothing. Everything. Depends how you look at it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, new, new record. Oh, oh, give us yeah. a record maybe that was inspiring you during the writing or what you all... You know what you all wanted to bring into that record as, as a new because it's a newer project. I don't. I don't know if we have one record that we could mm. even. I mean, probably each of us have like a, you know, ten, fifteen, thirty, whatever each. You know, I mean, it's a weird thing. Uh, let me just derail this right away. I think that the more interesting question is not what inspires you, but what inspires you to even listen to what you listen to. Like, what kind of life do you live in, and wor world that you do you live in that makes you want to listen or play that kind of music? You know, like what got this guy into playing like crazy drums, or yeah. me to make you know annoying robot noises on a bass? Like, what are the things that got you to do that not like the records that inspired you but the life that inspired you to even want to be attracted to that art does that make sense yeah i mean it does in a kind of way i was going to ask you guys kind of that question too like okay. what you know was there an album that inspired you to play bass and and, and new drums like what were mm. like an album or something let's, let's, let's get, get you the drum question well first. i mean uh the first album i bought and, and I was inspired by it was uh, Kiss Alive, the first, you know, Kiss Live album. And the drum solo, 100,000 Years. And, but that wasn't really what inspired me to play drums. I mean, that was part of it. It's, it was my upbringing is what inspired me to play drums. Is there an album um, which has drumming on it that really, to this day, really Led Zeppelin blows II? you away? Yeah. Well, I mean, Led Zeppelin II inspired me at a young age. Uh, Ginger Baker's uh, or Cream Wheels of Fire uh, and Disraeli Gears that inspired me um, you know but that's these are late 70 albums you know so, so. but I mean that's and or even 1969 I think Led Zeppelin 2 came out in 69 and still to this day I mean you listen to them and I mean they still inspire you no not really no? I mean I've, it's run its course is there anything modern a modern record that's Modern Drummers, um, Modern Album? Not really. But I mean, there's some albums that are really, really cool. Um, uh, there's a band called The Shining. Uh, they're, they're pretty cool. It's hardcore stuff, almost industrial. Um, I really enjoy the Retox album, the first Retox album. And uh, of course, The Locust, you know, which, uh, which kind of convinced me. It's like, man, I want to jam with these guys, you know? So I think that kind of knowing where they came from, you know, if we're going to go back to the first question, um, you know, I think that kind of inspired me and told me where to go and what direction and how to play because I was jamming with these guys. I knew what they were about, so I had to bump up my, my ante. Right. That's yeah. right. And what about you for bass? Is there a, an album? Yeah, yeah. Well, there is like one specific album that really got me to kind of focus on the, the instrument you know, um, but I mean, I, I grew up like uh, 10, 11, 12, like obsessing over bands like the Cramps and the Sex Pistols. And it was really more for me about the aesthetic than, than I think the musicianship. And so it wasn't until I discovered uh, No Means No Wrong, I think really, which made me realize that bass could be kind of looked at differently. Because if you, if you, and well, with the Cramps, there was, you know, sometimes not even a bass on the songs. But if you, if you would like reference like something like, the Sex Pistols, I mean, it was just like a bass line playing the guitar riff. But for me, when I heard No Means No Wrong, it was, it was its own instrument. And it, and it really stood out and kind of, it, was, it, it made it more of like a, um, a percussive element. And, and it had like this weird texture to the actual riff and the sound of the, of, you know, of the bass lines or whatever. And so it, that's what really stuck with me. Because then I, cause it was sort of redefining, I think, especially whatever year that album came out I think I was like four, like maybe 14 or 15 years old and it, and it really just kind of shifted things uh, without me even realizing it I didn't realize it until much later like oh my god that's why I really got into playing bass is because of a, a band like that which is a nice shout out to um, they're from this area uh, of course actually. yeah 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 uh, I met them one time uh, at a locust show in Holland and it was um, m amazing to to meet them and um, just to kind of have them like compliment um, you know my bass playing or whatever 
So, um, but I mean, it does go. I mean, it goes. It's it is full like acro you know across the whole musical sp pers uh, spectrum because um, we we played uh, Dead Cross played a show and Bill Ward was there. Um, this is like I don't know what was that Napalm Death show we did. This is like a year or two ago. It was a while ago, right when we sort of first started. And um, Bill Ward was there and we were all kind of like outside talking. And I heard him go, "Where's the bass player?" And I was like, "Oh my God!" You know, and he's and he was like, "You and he like he had these compliments that I just thought were uh, a bit absurd because <laughs> I, I I'm not sure I'd give myself that much credit, um, you know, especially coming from someone who played with Geezer Butler, who was one of, one of the, the, you know, a fantastic bass player and in such a you know, legendary band. Um, so it was, it was a trip. But regardless, yeah, No Means No would probably be the, the bass inspiration for me. Is there an album that, give it a guilty pleasure, like an honest, give, give us one that you love to listen to. That's that's. Not I mean, I think I don't. I don't have like, a. I don't have any guilt. Like if I like it, it's it's. I like yeah. it. You know. I mean, I like some Britney Spears. You know. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, if you don't like it, fuck you. I don't care. Like if it's good, it's good. If it's not good, it's fine. There's only good music and bad music. I mean, if it's done right, it's generally good. But you know, it's up to your taste. I mean, I like. Uh, uh, there's one particular album. It's a Latin jazz album, and it's a live Iraqeri, Iraqeri from from Cuba. And, uh, you know, when, when the Havana Jazz Fest went on in, I think it was 77 or 78, uh, and these guys went on stage, musicians like Dizzy Gillespie and, and several others, uh, you know, their jaw dropped. It's like yeah. jazz evolved, and they didn't know what was happening, you know, on this island that was so isolated. And they, uh, you know, they were inspired. And, and from that moment on, Dizzy started bringing in, you know, a lot of, you know, uh, Latin percussion into his works. And so it was kind of cool. So what that, that, that? that, I think that either 77 or 79. That, I mean, that seemed like, especially with jazz, it, that was such a crazy time because they, they were like the, the jazz artists at that time were the ones that were really experimenting and just doing right. like, it's true, really avant-garde stuff, which is, I think maybe the starting point of a lot of the things that we would have drawn directly or it being influenced directly from, you know, I found I found in those records, like some of the Latin jazz records, or, or even some of the jazz records, there were heavy elements. There were certain riffs or or notes that they were hitting that you know kind of sounded evil, demonic, you know, menacing, uh, and and that's what I was attracted to. I enjoyed that, you know, very much. And those were the kind of that was the kind of music I was searching for. You know, something that would scare me. Right. And rhythms and, and and stuff that would, you know, shock me. Yeah, I mean, I, one of one of my favorite bands, like the Beatles, and I'm such a fan of the later stuff when they were like on drugs and had mustaches and stuff. When <laughs> it kind of just like wasn't so safe, you know. I, I wanted to hear like backwards drum tracks and like just weird stuff that no one had really been doing yet, you know. Cool, cool. And let's do one last one. Is there a record? I mean, you guys have been traveling. For years, you've been in a lot of bands. Is there an album you always, when you go in a record store, is there an album that you always look for that's eluded your collection? Nothing. Damn, I don't no, know. man. <laughs> I, I always like have a meltdown. I went into Amoeba right before we left yeah. in Los Angeles, and I was like, you know, I like sold some stuff, and I got a little bit of credit, and I run, and I'm like, what the hell is this? Hundred and eighty dollar PIL box set with all this stuff I've never even heard of, and I was just like, I, and I couldn't afford it. And I'm like, this sucks. It's like a it's like a vortex going in places like that. I mean, there's yeah. stuff, yeah, but yeah. I don't know. It's just stuff. you almost have to you know create like little file on your phone with notes, you know, right. you know <laughs> exactly. albums that yeah. you know go through your mind, you know, during your journey, and yeah, you know, ah, oh, let me go to my notes and ah, oh, this album, this one, and then buy them. But you know, it's really difficult sometimes to to focus and uh, pick something up like that. I agree 100 percent, guys. Well, okay. We appreciate you being thank, on the show. Thank you. And thank you. I know yeah. your time is busy. No, Thanks good. so thank much. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed. Well, thanks, yeah. guys. Definitely. Oh, cool. Thank you. So thank much. you. Uh, thank you. Thank you.